But we have a special guest joining us today on the Film Threat Podcast. We have the director of Pursuit. Let me let me tell you about this movie. I have only seen the trailer, but it's but it's uh it 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 looks like a good action movie starring Emil Hirsch. It's out this weekend. Also, welcome to the Film Threat live stream, Brian Skiba. Hopefully, I said that right, Brian. How you doing? What's going uh -huh. on? Doing well, man. And yes, absolutely. That's it. Brian Skiba. Thank you. Thanks for having okay, me. Okay, great. Cool. So uh, we've got our, our audience here uh, on YouTube. Uh, we're just talking about movies opening this weekend. A lot of people talking about Uncharted. But as we like to say at Film Threat, there's a lot of other movies that are out there on video on demand or in limited release theatrically. And, you know, when you're an Indian, you got to compete with that. What are some of the just in your mind before we talk about the movie? Like, what are some of the challenges as an indie filmmaker, you know, trying to compete against the big boys? It's 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 as an indie filmmaker. I mean, the, the way I look at it is is there's there's an audience for indie films. There's 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 the audience that gets indie films that understands, hey, we're working with with a limited budget. That, that's no bigger than Marvel's, uh, you know, catering budget. I mean, it's like, you know, so we have these, we have these small budgets, you know, but, we, we're, but we're getting great actors and we're telling great stories. And that's where indie films lies and is in the storytelling. And, and, uh, and so we, we don't have, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. We, we don't have quite the, uh, the, the budgets to do everything that they're going to do in Uncharted, you know, or, or that Marvel's going to do. But so we have to make up for it. And, and I think the way we make up for it is in the storytelling, is in the acting and, and just providing entertainment. You know, it's something for somebody to check out for you know 90 minutes and, and have a good time. You know, well, I, I saw the trailer for the film. It's it's intriguing. I'm a big fan of John Cusack. Love, love John Cusack. Uh, just uh, I don't know. I feel like I grew up watching John Cusack. So he plays this, he's, he's involved in some things that might be considered nefarious. Oh can, yeah. Can we say that? Yeah. And his oh, son, yeah. Emil Hirsch gets involved in some trouble and basically gets a, a price put on his head. And this situation must be resolved. Is that, is that a fair, fair telling of the story basically? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's what the story's about. Um, you know, and, and, and John plays this, this kind of uh, interesting, his character's great because it's this father who thinks he's doing the right thing for his son. And his son is going, Hey dad, fuck you. I don't like it. Uh, can I say that? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you can say fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> fuck it. We're on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what, um, you know, that's, that's what, uh, you know, that's jo that's jo John and Emil's dynamic. And it's great having those two powerhouses on set. I mean, it's 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 absolutely fantastic. Well, I've just been I watched John Cusack for years. And what I love about him just as an actor is he'll do like a big movie. Right. He'll do like a 2012. Right. Roland Emmerich. But mm -hmm. he'll do like smaller indies, which I love because I do think that's an opportunity for him to, you know, get to try out some stuff you might not have been able to do, you know, um, I, I just from the trailer, it doesn't seem like he's, I mean, he's still John Cusack, so he's likable, right? Like, but he's, he's playing a guy who's uh, he's got some dark things up his sleeve. So tell me like, how did you pull together the casting on this? Like, did you talk to John? What was like the moment where like you got John and then Emil Hirsch to commit to be in the film? What is that like? Yeah, so John, I, I, um, John identified with the character almost right away. I mean, he he read the script. Um, his agent called and said, "Hey, he wants to talk to the director." I got on the phone with him, and he had all these great ideas. And you know, and, and he's very hands on. He he's very deep thinker. And and and, um, and yeah, and, and he does. He, he's very selective as to what he does. But he does like to do these kind of indie projects. And when he came to me, he was like, he's like, he's like, the reason I like this is because it isn't so much a, a meathead action film. You know, it's not just a bunch of buff dudes running around shooting stuff up and, and boom, boom, you're done. It's it's literally it, we, we have some story here. And he felt like the way he termed it was was uh, this is an indie action. You know, it's 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 a uh, it's kind of like a you know, it's got these backstories and it's got these great characters and stuff that you can get involved in. 
and um, and so he identified immediately with his character and and came on board. And so it wasn't once once John was in and and people started hearing what John Cusack's doing the film. I think at that point, it, all these other actors start falling into place. You know, they're like, all right, I, I want to. work. They're like us. They're like, I want to work with John. You know, and Emil and John had done a film a film before. And Emil was like, hey, I'd love to work with John again. And he was for the lead to, but um, he came back and said, I'm identifying with Rick. He's like, I, I like his character, Rick. And um, he had some great ideas he brought to the table. And, and uh, you know, from there, the dominoes just kind of fell. I mean, it was great. That's great. I, I, I find it cool that John Cusack related to the character because in a way, and, you know, I, I've been around the indie film world for uh, more than a few decades. And um, it's uh, so elements can be criminal. Elements of this business can be criminal. <laughs> so the fact that like the the fact that he was like, oh, I kind of get because like, yeah, I mean, I I've I I've butted heads with some people in the past where I'm like, oh, this business can be criminal sometimes. People are weird. Um, oh. It's bizarre. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I mean, you're seeing all sorts of stuff on the news where people use the the COVID stuff to. Uh, to finance a little bit of a movie and then they pocketed the rest. You know, it's crazy. It's crazy <laughs> what people are doing these days. I mean, I don't know. That that just makes me want to see the movie more, right? Like, <laughs> exactly. but what is, what are some of the challenges? And we do have, um, I would just mention to people in the chat that are watching this, if you have some questions for Brian, he is a successful independent filmmaker and successful meaning he made an independent movie and it is out today, Pursuit, which you can see. And it's on it's on video on demand. Am, am I right? Video on demand, Apple TV, and in, in theaters. We've got about thirty theaters across the nation. So sweet. So pursuit is out there. It is it is it is in theaters and on video on demand. So if you have questions for Brian, post them in the chat, and I'll I'll put up I'll put up uh, some of the questions here. But but like, what are some of the challenges when you're dealing? Because I mean, one of the things that I think is the biggest thing. And maybe people don't talk about this enough, but it's like right out there. It's the days of shooting, right? Like a yeah. lot of indies are made in like two weeks. So yeah. I don't know how many weeks you had to shoot it. That tends to be the biggest challenge. I don't know how long you of a shooting schedule you had, but what were some of the challenges put putting, you know, getting this to the screen? Exactly. I mean, and that goes back to what we were talking about earlier is, is, is like on these indie films, I don't have an, I don't get the actor for, for, like you say, I, I, John, we had for three days and Emil I had for three days. And when you watch the film, you'll be like, that was it, you know? And, and, uh, and then the shooting schedule was a 15 day shoot, you know? So it was about two and a half weeks. We had like six day weeks. It was split up very strange, uh, mainly because of location. So it, it, it is, it becomes this thing where, um, you know, we, we get our actors, we got to shoot, we got to shoot, we got to shoot, we got to shoot. And when you get into the edit room, there because of budget limitations, again, we, we don't have an opportunity to be like, eh, I don't like that as much. Let's go reshoot it, you know? And, and a lot of my stunt guys that, you know, they were on Spider-Man, they're on these big films. And I asked them, I'm like, we're, we're doing our fight scene. And I went to my fight coordinator who did Spider-Man. And I was like, hey man, uh, how, how, you know, for a Marvel movie, how long would they shoot this scene for? He's like, well, we pre this for three days and then we'd shoot for probably a week. And then we'd come back and <laughs> We'd shoot a couple more days, and, and I'm like, we got an hour and a half. <laughs> you know, like, you, 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 okay, all right. So I mean, that that's that's really the trade-off. And so when it does get to a point where it is theatrically released, it is an accomplishment, absolutely. Yeah, I, uh, I I just always like like I'm watching your trailer, and there's a scene where John Cusack is cooking steak. Yeah, is that am I okay? So yeah. there was definitely, was there a body double that for the insert shots of the steak? And that's how you uh, kind of extend those scenes. <laughs> we did it. We did have a body double for John, mainly for, for some of his stunt work. Right. Um, right. But he shot most of John's stuff. Uh, that, was wow. his hand. that was his hand. That was his mistake. Um, <laughs> it, those, those three days we, and it was legitimate, um, you know, balls to the wall. Uh, we, the, the way I set it up is I had the stand in come in, we'd light everything with the stand in, we'd get everything just right. Perfect. We'd have all the blocking. I right, bring in John, we'd show John the blocking. He'd be like, all right, cool, let's go. And, and John is a, is a guy who likes to keep the camera rolling. He's, he's very quick. Uh, he's a pleasure to work with on set. I mean, we had so much fun on set with him and, um, 
and he likes to do rolling retakes. He'd be like, no, no, let's go back. Let's do it again. And we do like a free one where it's like, this is the actor's rift. And, uh, and that was it. But we were, able, we were able to get our coverage for the most part with John um, there. Uh, so it was, it was uh, three days of about 25, 30 pages, but we blew through them and got them done. Um, the stunt work we had to do, we went back and cleaned that up. You know, so. Well, let's, um, we have some questions for you in the chat. First of all, your name, Skiba says Cody Gidley, who also asks you, Brian, you started with the 48 hour film challenges. That's, uh, is that true? Yeah, man, that's a throwback. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's hilarious. I uh, I started, yeah, I did. I, I started with uh, the A3F, the almost famous film festival in Arizona. And, uh, you know, I was, I was going to college in film school and I was like, hey, I'm gonna do, this is this cool challenge. You have to do a, a short film in, five, in two days. And uh, so I, I, I did one and I, I placed and did pretty well. And I was like, you know, I was already going to film school at the time. So I was like, hey, let's just let's just keep going. And I started meeting people. And that's kind of how I got my first feature was I did a short and people love the short so much. Like, you got to make a feature film. And so I, I went and did this kind of like zombie grindhouse thing. And uh, that's, that was the kickoff. But yeah, man, um, I'm actually a judge for the one that they're doing one right now. And I'm actually a judge on it. <laughs> full circle it's kind of crazy yeah. well i think that's cool because you know i mean everybody as a filmmaker starts you know somewhere making little movies with uh you know camcorder or phone or uh i made super eight movies when i was a kid everybody has a place to start and i think those those film challenges it forces you to make decisions quickly which yeah. or under duress and i think that that's i think they're really useful uh dungeon questing has a question for you brian any advice for filmmakers who want to pitch and a new and unusual idea <laughs> um you know it, it, pitching is it, make sure your pitch is no more than one page tell the entire story i, I think that's the biggest thing when people are pitching is they feel like uh, they're, they're doing a D dvd back you know you're not doing the back of the dvd when you're pitching a project, nobody wants the cliffhanger as, as a producer. They want to know everything from A to A to Z. What is going on? What what are you going to show? Uh, what how's it end? And they want it all there in front of them so they can go yes or no. You know, and and that's I think that's the key to pitching. Absolutely. And and then again, um, I one of my mentors, Andrew Stevens, who's a producer on this show, uh, his famous say, saying is. You know, we're not always making movies for ourselves. We're making movies for the audience. And so what you think might be super fantastic and great, you know, the general population might not. And so, um, you know, get it out there, float it to a few of your friends, get it, get it out to people who aren't your friends and uh, see what they say. And, and I, I think once you get a consensus that, yeah, this is a good idea, then, then start putting it on places like Ink Tip. You know, I think Ink Tip's a great place to, to pitch and put projects and, and believe me, those guys contact me like crazy and I know they do other producers. So um, it's, it's a great place to start. Uh, Ink tip. I actually subscribe to their newsletter. Ink tip is really useful. So if you've not heard of that, uh, anyone watching this or in the chat, like check out, check out ink tip. It is a great resource um, to get your script out there. And also if you're a producer to search for a script, you know, so, uh, Brian Skiba, this has been great having you on having you on the Film Threat uh, podcast, our live cast here. You're brave to come up. Our chat's pretty friendly. Everyone in our <laughs> chat is pretty friendly. They're fans of indie films. But um, be before you leave, can you give us your pitch to like, look, Uncharted's out there. We just talked about this movie, The Cursed, which I think is a really good horror film. Pitch to our audience and to everyone watching this, listening to this, like, why they should go check out Pursuit. I mean, I'm going to say just for me, it's John Cusack's in it. So that that's like the main sell to me. So uh, you can stop right there. But, uh, you know, you're you're a, an independent going up against these big, bigger projects opening in theaters. Um, can you can you uh, give your pitch to the audience to see Pursuit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, 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 Pursuit and my films in general are always kind of a, uh, Kind of a throwback to the 90s action films where where everything on the screen is, is real all our stunts are real all our explosions are real uh you know it's all done in camera we we, we don't we don't you know we, we don't have the budget for visual effects like uncharted does you know are these like horror films i mean it's 
it's it, we do it in camera. We're really blowing shit up. We're really, you know, we're really burning stuff down. We're really shooting people up. And 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 so if you're a fan of that kind of action where you want to see spectacles that are that are real and done in camera, um, this is the film. And, and not only that, but you've got a great story to boot, you know, and, and, and we've got some squirm moments too. You know, we've got there's a lot of violence in the film that, you know, for fans of just those squirm moments where you're like, ah, you know, so it's a it's a cool thing. I got that vibe that, that you mentioned 90s action movie where everything is real, right? Like 90s action movies were untainted by, you know, so much of the digital effects we talked about. When we were talking about Uncharted, just there's just so much stuff that's digital. You just like are like, all right, I don't know. You just I don't feel like you're as invested as like, you know, your your action movie where it was all real. So so there you go. See, you don't have to like look the movies in theaters. So seek it out. But you don't have to just go with because because Uncharted, you don't have to. You, you'll have time to see that. Uh, someone has another comment here. Paul's NYC says, is there a film idea you have that you trashed thinking, ah, it's too out there? Anything, Brian? Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's it's funny. You, you got to pull the ones out of the out of the trash can once in a while. I, I have one that's that's, uh, you know, I, I had one that was like uh, zombies, you know, and, and it was something that my my wife had come to me and she's like, you realize there's zombies out there, right? And I was like, oh man, that's that's a cool idea for a flick. And she she and so we started working on it. And so far it's still sitting in the in the in the pile. But I, I feel like, you know, um, it'd be a fun one, you know, why not? Killer killer I, zombies. I don't know. <laughs> I, I love anything with zombies. I mean, I, I feel like I, I just I don't know, just like um I feel like I mean, there've been books written about zombie films, you know, they're just so it's, it's like a conduit to talk about um, interesting social issues, but in a fun way because zombies get killed. So big fan of the genre. Uh, yeah. Brian, it's been a pleasure having you on the film threat uh, live cast here. We appreciate it. Yeah, and, no, it's been great. Thanks for having me. It's been awesome. Awesome. And congrats on the film and uh, take care. Have a great weekend. 